Hi, this is Joanne and we're in my lab again. We're going to experiment with some gummy bears to demonstrate the properties of liquid nitrogen and also some of the hygroscopic properties of gelatin, which is the main protein component within the gummy bear. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to get myself ready. So Hi, welcome to my gummy bear experiment. Uh, we're going to look at the properties of liquid nitrogen. And uh, to do that, we are going to freeze a gummy bear in liquid nitrogen. But you can see here that I have two of them because you always want to have a control to show that, well, if you don't freeze it in liquid nitrogen and subject it to the same um, forces, it's going to not behave in exactly the same way if uh, we know that liquid nitrogen does make changes. Um, so this guy will be the one we experiment on. This will be our control. I kept them the same color. We don't want to change any variables, even color. I don't think it has the color has much to do with um, how a gummy bear behaves, but you never know, so you always want to make sure you're careful. I also have one other uh, thing I'd like to show you here, and this here is a giant gummy bear. Why is he so giant? And he's very wobbly too. I'm just going to lay him down. He needs a nap. Um, what I did was to leave this gummy bear in water overnight, and gelatin has a property because it's a, a highly branched tangly chain um, of holding on to lots of water. And in fact, gelatin can hold up to five to ten times its weight in water. Um, and all gelatin actually can form a gel with a little bit of water in it. This bear basically, we'd like to say this bear has edema. So if you've ever known, maybe your grandma had edema in her ankles, like her ankles would swell. That's because the connective tissue in your skin has some molecules that can also hold water quite well, just like gelatin does. And so if, you're, if you have some sort of imbalance in salts in your body or a hormonal imbalance, you can actually hold more water, much like this, so the connective tissue in your skin can swell. Um, also, uh, I'd like to point out that um, Gelatin is actually made from some of the fibers that we can find in our skin. These fibers are called collagen. And in our skin, they are very long and straight and very strong, very good tensile strength. Um, but what we do is we take some of that collagen and we subject it to heat and different pHs. And that denatures the protein and makes it a tangled mess. And it's that tangled mess that allows it to hold onto water to create that gel. So let's go ahead with our experiment here. I've got liquid nitrogen in a doer. This is named after a fellow who did a lot of experimentation with um, liquefied gases way back when. So here I'm pouring it into here. Wearing gloves, wearing safety glasses. This is very important. Okay. All right, let's take off that glove. So. You can see it's boiling, and that's because liquid nitrogen boils at minus 196 degrees centigrade. Your freezer is definitely not that cold. So what we're going to go ahead and do is to put our gummy bear in this uh, boiling liquid nitrogen. And what's going to happen, well, most uh, molecules will become more brittle when you make them cold. But if a substance has a lot of water, it becomes especially brittle. And that's why putting things like bananas and apples and flowers are a lot of fun uh, in liquid nitrogen because then they shatter quite easily. My original plan was to go ahead and shatter this bear with a hammer. But in trial experiments here, I have discovered that's just not necessary at all. So I'm going to go ahead and use my forceps here. Oh, see, I already broke apart just by me touching him. But here we go. He's already breaking apart, just dropping him there. Whoa, and there's the heat even. Helped it break apart more. I don't think I can get everything out of here. Anyway, now it's just like uh, rock candy. A little bit of glass. Using a hammer just makes it worse. <laughs> um, it will eventually thaw and become sort of a sticky mess, so I'm going to have to clean that up. So just in case you don't believe me, in case you forgot how gummy bears behave, here's our regular gummy bear. And we know if I pick him up, he's not going to fall apart very easily, is he? And take a hammer to him. Oh, that wasn't him. He just stick it in my hammer. So he's just all smushy, right? That's properties of gelatin. That's the properties of the sugars and the, uh, the amount of water that's in here. 
Now, I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and subject uh, this other gummy bear with extra water in it to more liquid nitrogen uh, and see what happens here. So let's go ahead and do this. Add more to my container. And, yep, there's the boiling. It's definitely warmer than minus 196 degrees centigrade in here. In fact, it's 27 degrees centigrade in this room or so. That's room temperature. Here he goes. Poor guy. Of course, very bubbly. Let's go ahead and we'll clear the remains of this other gummy bear a little bit out of the way. What is liquid nitrogen good for in a lab? Um, it's good for certain machinery to keep uh, magnets cool, for instance. Um, it's also, of course, great for transporting uh, biological supplies and storing biological supplies. So I keep cell lines cryogenically preserved here so that I can have them for future use. Um, it keeps, uh, if you cool something down with uh, frozen uh, gases, you can prevent uh, oxygen from getting in a system. So that's very useful if you want to keep a high vacuum. Let's see if we can get this out. You know what? Let's go back to the forceps. I'm going to put my gloves on again. It's very cold. You can get severe frostbite from this, as you can imagine. All right. Huh? He broke. And he broke. This poor guy. So it looks very different because of the amount of water. Much lighter, much, much crispier, and more fragile than the one that uh, was in its native state rather than filled with extra water. So, all right, so that was just a demonstration. Learned a little bit about gelatin today and a little bit about the properties of liquid nitrogen. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.